Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers. I'm privileged to pastor Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My wife and I started this church, can you believe it, in 1985. <laughs> That's last century. And we have been pastoring here for over 35 years. God has called us to this ministry. Today we need your help in prayers and also in finances. You see, we are called to, to be a spiritual lighthouse to the lost of Las Vegas. And uh, we are reaching those that desperately need Jesus in one of the most difficult cities in America. So we need your financial support to help us continue. Continue producing these online sermons and continue with the many ministries of this church. If you could send us your support through Venmo, our username, username in Venmo is Peaceway Christian Center. If you'd like to send us a check, please do so by making the check out to Peaceway Christian Center and send it to 7570 Peaceway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89147. Help us to continue to minister in the spiritually neediest city in America. Well, God bless you. We hope to hear from you soon. Now let's enjoy this week's sermon as we hear the word of the Lord. Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers from Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas. And uh, the sermon title is uh, November 1985 to November 2021. It's our 36 year anniversary. And we're thankful for God, his blessing, his faithfulness and miracles for 3.6 decades. That's 13,149 days or 1,872 weeks. Praise God. You know, 36 years ago, the lying demons told me that we would not make it. God assured me that we would. I'm so thankful I listened to God. And in Jesus' name and power, I rebuked and rejected their lies. If I had listened to the devilish agents that came from the father of lies, we would not be here today. This campus would not be here today. Instead, I forced myself to believe God and his truth. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I do want to brag about the Lord and declare that you have the power to believe God and his promises and reject the lies of demons. The truth makes all the difference, and only God has the truth. I said, only God has the truth. Say it to yourself. Well, here are some truths that you need to know to make it for the long haul. First point is this. Some may trust in chariots and horses, but we will trust in the Lord. <laughs> uh, this is Psalm 20, verse 7. But the context is verse 6 through 9. Let us hear what King David wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, notice how he started this passage. Again, Psalm 20, verses 6 through 9. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Well, what does this verse mean? Well, it means this. What you have in the natural that gives you a position of security, provision, and power that God is using in your life for a blessing. Don't put your trust in that or in people or friendly circumstance. Your confidence is from the Lord alone. God is our source, God alone. And we can be grateful and certainly we should be to those that God uses, but we don't put our trust in these things. As the inscription on our money reads, in God we trust. 
That is why God told King David <clears throat> to not number the army. When David and Israel went into battle, they never knew how many men were fighting. But they did know that God was fighting for them, and that is all they needed to know. In 2 Samuel 24, David counts his army. How long did it take Joab to count the army? <laughs> Nine months and 20 days. And he found out there were 800,000 in Israel and 500,000 in Judah. And then the judgment of God hit. How many died in the judgment of God for counting the army? 70,000. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Well, when we first started, our rent or, and or mortgage was started out to be $300 a month, and then the mortgage grew at one point to be $10,400. <laughs> wow, we had to put our trust in the Lord to meet that big number of $10,400 per month, and God did come through. Well, our second point is this. Tough times never last, but tough people do. <laughs> That's a famous saying from Dr. Robert Schuller. In the advertisement for his book, it reads, uh, Dr. Schuller shows you how to build a positive self-image, no matter what your problem. I would encourage you to build not a positive self-image, although that's good, but a positive God image in your life. Meaning, in your mind and emotions, uh, you need to say, I'm not the answer, but God is the answer. Let's look at verse 6. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. <clears throat> I need to affirm in my heart and in my mind that God has already provided the victory for what I need. I've learned something in 36 years. Perseverance is the key to God's calling. Whenever I felt like resigning, I would counsel myself to do so, but to do it tomorrow. <laughs> and then when I would get to the next day, I would give myself the same counsel. That's what the Lord told me to do. <laughs> I can honestly say that I've never written a letter of resignation. <clears throat> During tough times, God put something in me that says, whatever is coming against me will not win, but I will win in the Lord. And through the Lord, I will overcome. Of course, the winning and the overcoming is really God's power at work. And also for pastors that I just want to encourage you, never resign on a Monday. <laughs> also, never resign when you're under the influence, not of drugs or alcohol, but an alcohol but under the influence of fear or loneliness or hurt or anger or bitterness or someone do, doing you wrong. Remember friends tough times don't last but God tough people do. So persevere through tough times. Don't quit over discouragement or little or no money or hurt or anger or people turning on you or depression, uh, even people coming against you, or I'll add bomb scares, <clears throat> or board members getting arrested, and the cumulative effect of weight and pressure of ministry. Don't quit. Why? Because Paul gives us an admonition in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You see, God has already created the answer to every problem when he called you at the beginning. He didn't make a mistake when he called you, and when he called you, he qualified you. And before you get too proud of yourself, remember God can use any donkey he wants. <laughs> this is one donkey that won't quit, <laughs> and I won't turn away. I'm going to go on in the ministry God has called me. Well, our third point is this. God has given us the privilege to build up the kingdom of God by blessing other believers. 
So the first way we build up the kingdom of God is by ministering to other believers. In the year 2003 and 2004, we were privileged to enjoy the building of 32 churches around the world. In addition to building the 32 churches uh, that we paid for to be built, four other churches followed our lead and built the total of five churches. The cost was 225000 to build the 32 churches. We raised the money as the Lord directed spontaneously in our services. People were becoming afraid to come to church because it was getting so expensive. So now the number is 39 churches. And 38 of them were built in developing countries. <clears throat> when you give the gift of land and a church building... It's the equivalent to giving someone a $2 million gift in our culture. So you do the math of 32 churches. If each average is 200, that would put us as a church of 6,500 people. <laughs> and of course, they're reaching others. In fact, I believe our gospel reach around the world is probably somewhere between 15,000 and 20 thousand. God has blessed our church. We thank God that he called us to such a great responsibility and privilege, and we are careful to give him all the glory. We were the glove that God slipped his hand into to reach the part of the world that we did reach. And the second way that we build up the kingdom of God uh, and other believers is by the churches with which we share our campus. Presently, we have two Jewish congregations that meet on Friday nights. In the afternoon on Sunday, Praise Tabernacle, a UPC Pentecostal church, meets in the afternoon, and they have for 22 years. We have a Latino church that meets Sunday nights in the main sanctuary. In the, in the chapel, uh, there's a Korean church that meets. And then at Sunday morning, there is a Brazilian church that meets in the sanctuary. And finally, Sunday evening, we have an Indonesian church <laughs> that meets in the chapel. We have a total of eight churches, including ourselves, that meet on our campus. Each one of these churches is reaching people that we could not reach. But we, by sharing our campus, get to participate in their salvation efforts and the maturing of believers that they are building up. In some instances, our contract is verbal and a handshake. Others we have agreements with. But I declare to you that we are kingdom people. We believe in reaching as many people by any means possible as we can for salvation. And then I would like to add the pastors of these churches. And we've been doing this for many decades now or at least two and a half. These pastors, I've never had a cross word. We've never had a cross word with each other. Wow. Well, Jesus said that they will know that you are my disciples, meaning the world knows we're just his disciples, if we have love for one another. So we share in his love when we share our campus. Hmm. Praise God. Well, the third way we build up other believers is uh, through what I'm allowed to do. This church has uh, allowed me to be an encourager to other pastors of other churches uh, through elected offices as presbyter of Southern Nevada and now executive presbyter of all of Nevada. Over the years, I've had several senior pastors proclaim that the reason they're, they're in ministry today in Las Vegas and elsewhere is because they were encouraged to continue when I was just talking to them. I like to get pastors laughing. <laughs> it's good to laugh and share words of encouragement. Laughter is great medicine, the Bible tells us. Well, our fourth point is this. The way we become an overcomer is by practicing forgiveness and emotional holiness. You want to persevere, you want to go long-term in ministry, you've got to do that. 
Fifthly, we need to remember this location is not, none other than the house of God. I declare to you, this is the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. Uh, just quickly in Genesis 28, verse 16. When Jacob, Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. <laughs> what is this campus at 7570 Peace Way? Well, we're a church, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no other business can make that claim. We're not the dry cleaners or the grocery store or the doctor's office or the hospital or the coffee shop or the restaurant. You get the pictures. These are the places of the temporary. The church is both the temporary and the eternal. And we are the one location that affects people for eternity. We are building relationships that will last for more than a billion years. We thank God for this celebration, this, this Sunday marking our 36 years. And we profoundly thank God for what he's done. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, when we reached the 30 year mark, I made a video and I'll try to send that out to you at some point. <laughs> and I said, let's do another 30. And so far we're about six years into that. So God has been faithful. We have persevered and to God be the glory for all that he has done. We are careful to give him all the praise. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing at Peaceway Christian Center in Las Vegas. Let's pray. Mighty God, we thank you for this anniversary celebration. We thank you that you are continuing to move in our, in our church and in our lives. We give you praise. And Lord, for all the other churches that are meeting on our campus and for all the other churches uh, where we have built buildings around the world in these 11 different countries. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And we give you the praise, and we just pray that people would be one to the Lord, and lives would be changed for eternity. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord, and we'll see you next week. anniversary of our church we are celebrating God his presence his faithfulness his miracles for 30 years I'm Pastor David Childers and this is our story the story of Peaceway Christian Center it's promises of water after completing my degree at Vanguard University Pastor Madeline and I came back to Las Vegas in September 1985. We started the church in November of 1985. And we started it in my mom and dad's house located here at 6840 South Polaris. There were 10 people at the first service. Truly a humble beginning. My parents, Pastor Paul and Furl Childers, helped us start the new church. Well, as you can tell, the house was purchased by the county and removed to make room for the 215 freeway. But right over here was our first sanctuary location in mom and dad's living room. We worshiped in the house just a few weeks. And then I began looking for another church in which to meet. This was made difficult because public schools would not rent churches in those days. So we began looking for a location to hold afternoon services. Let's go to the next place where we ended up.
Well, it seems like there was no place to meet. Yet God provided a place and met our need. He gave us a miracle. You know, just when it seems there's no answers, the Lord does provide for His people. Vineyard Christian Fellowship was located on Shift Drive, which was a street that was situated in an office warehouse complex off the southwest corner of Spring Mountain and South Arville Street. Shift Drive was not on any maps, which made it hard for people to find us. And we met in the afternoon in this location in the warehouse area of the building. And let me just say, it was hot in the summer and it was cold in the winter. But God was with us and gave us a place to meet. And we were very grateful to God and the vineyard for this place. We grew to about 40 people in this location and met here for 100 weeks. And the first name of the church was Southwest Assembly of God. Let's go to the next place down the road a bit on West Flamingo. We moved at the end of 1987 into the Good Samaritan Lutheran Church located at the corner of West Flamingo and Torrey Pines. We started meeting in the afternoon, but we're having a difficult time growing. And then the Lutherans gave us a great blessing. They started letting us meet in their fellowship hall at 11 o'clock in the morning. And during this time, we grew to be a church of 80 to 90. And we were here 50 weeks. And I am forever grateful to Pastor David Miller and the Good Samaritan Lutheran Church for allowing us to meet Sunday morning. And this allowed us to move into our own storefront. Let's go to that location now. Well, at the end of 1988, we finally got into our own place, a storefront here at the corner of Spring Mountain and Rainbow. It's 4,000 square feet. And we're happy to say that we turned it from a dealer's school into a church. And here we grew to about 150 or 160 people and made plans to purchase property to build on Peace Way. Well, we're inside Lee's Korean barbecue. And uh, behind me is where the pulpit used to be. And uh, we're filming from where the congregation used to be. And uh, we spent uh, three and a half years in here, and God moved in many services, and many lives were changed. And we're grateful to God to be on the inside of this building, remembering God's miracles, blessings, and provision. I want to tell you about a financial miracle that happened here. The most we paid in rent uh, with the Lutherans was $500 a month. And uh, when we rented this place, when we leased it, uh, our rent jumped to $2,700 a month. I'm happy to report that God increased our tithes and offerings immediately and gave us the ability to uh, pay the rent here. And when we left, we were paying $3,500 a month. And God supplied the increase. And I said, we've already had, and I, as I've already said, we had 160 people meeting here. It was a great time for the church. God truly blessed us, and uh, we would need all that blessing as we prepared to buy land and build our own building. Let's move now to the campus. We purchased the current location here at 7570 Peace Way on March the 28th, 1991, which was my birthday. It just was a coincidence that it closed on my birthday of that year. And then by February of 1992, we built the first building, which is where the chapel is. And uh, then in 1996, we built the extension to the chapel, which is where the preschool is. And then in 1998, we uh, finished our main sanctuary that we currently enjoy. And we praise God for the wonderful building that he allows us to use. 
the land and the off-sites, on-sites, and all the buildings cost about $1.9 million. And since 1992, we have paid about $1.3 million in interest and $1.3 million in principal. And uh, we're believing the Lord that we'll get the rest of it paid off here in the next few years. What a joy it is to celebrate uh, our, our campus with other churches. Uh, there's a total of seven churches that meet here every weekend. Uh, we coordinate 21 services. And uh, we're privileged to uh, see the Lord reach people that we can't reach as we all work together. We were blessed of the Lord in the 2003 and 2004 years. We built 32 churches in 11 countries that were most of them in the developing countries. And so we are blessed to have 32 daughter churches around the world that are reaching a significant number of people for the Lord in the countries. And um, we look forward to that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And we will see brothers and sisters that we were, uh, that we helped to bring to the Lord and those that they reached as well. It's gonna be a great day on the other side. Looking forward to seeing Dad again. He's been there now almost 12 years. God bless you. And this is a little quick history of Peaceway Christian Center, also known as Spring Valley Assembly of God and Southwest Assembly of God. God bless you. Let's do another 30.